Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, coming at you with a quick updated deck profile and today I'll be showing you guys my Cubics. Uh, so this deck actually did get a very recent regional top surprisingly, uh, earning 6th place at a Costa Rica regional. Um, and it was playing some interesting uh, ratios of cards, an interesting uh, spice card that I decided to incorporate in my build. Uh, so I figured I'd show you guys the list. Um, it's probably like the you know 500th time that I've uh, posted this deck because I absolutely love this deck. It's probably in my top 5 favorite decks of all time. So we'll try to go through the list pretty quick. Um, the cubic ratios and a lot of the you know, basic cards are pretty standard and you know, haven't changed much. But I'll explain some of the spice and you know explain why we're playing you know certain cards. Uh, so for the cubic ratios, uh, we have the three Crimson Nova, Big Daddy Boss Monster, uh, the three Dooza to dump our Karma to get those searches, uh, the three V Gem uh, potentially for defense sometimes, and also to dump off of uh, Karma's on field effect. And if we you know ever get the uh, obscure cubic effects, you know to do their thing. But yeah, three V Gem, and then one of each of the other cubics. Um, don't really care to go over their names. Uh, you don't really summon them that much, but I play all six of them just to have the most amount of names to have in hand for Crimson Nova. Um, typically, though, you can easily set out like two or three of these going into game two and three. Um, another reason as well for the third V gem is because it is a dark target for Allure of Darkness. Uh, speaking of darks, I'm playing the two Radiant. I uh, was previously playing three, but I'm down to two. Um, just, you know, good to be able to tribute over an annoying monster, and, you know, if it's dead in your hand, you can pitch it off of uh, Twin Twisters or uh, Allure of Darkness. Uh, even though this is back at three, I am only playing the two Summoner Monk. Uh, one of the reasons is because I only own the two Ultras, and the other reason is because you don't really want to see multiples of this in your hand. Uh, it's a great card when it goes off, uh, discarding potentially Cubic Karma and getting your Dooza on board for uh, two searches. Um, but, of course, it is, you know, uh, prone to Ash Blossom, but the nice thing is even if they do Ash Blossom, you still discard his cost, uh, meaning you can get your Karma Engrave and can get the search, so yeah, two Summoner Monk, um, pretty good card, but again, another one of those easy side-out cards. And then finally, the one Max C for the only hand trap. Uh, this deck is very aggressive, uh, very focused on uh, ending the game quickly, so I don't really see the need for playing the other hand traps, although if you do want to play a more control-oriented build, uh, you can definitely play things like Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, Draw Unlocked, etc. Uh, for the spells, we have the three cubic wave and the three cubic karma. Pretty standard there. Uh, so this is what uh, the guy that got sixth place in Costa Rica was playing, and I find it really interesting. Uh, the free scapegoat. Uh, so this does two things for the deck. Uh, number one, the deck it is obviously um, very low on defenses. Uh, really, the only defensive plays you have is uh, Dooza to dump the trap to be able to try to survive a turn, or um, you know set B jam and hope that they just attack into it and can't get over it. Uh, so Scapegoat adds another uh, defensive play to the deck potentially, and also can help, uh, of course, spam tokens on the board and give you some links that uh, can support your uh, Crimson Nova and potentially um, you know, aid in getting your uh, OTK. So overall, Scapegoat, um, I think, will be a pretty nice uh, you know, tech in the deck, and obviously it worked out for the guy in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, next, we cut it down to two Foolish Burial Goods. Um, obviously, it's a really great card. Um, you're definitely not wrong for playing three if you choose to do so, but it is unfortunately only once per turn, so I don't want to see multiples. And again, this deck is very fast, very aggressive, very focused on the OTK. So um, the deck already plays more than enough bricks as it is, so I don't want to you know, brick with multiple Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, next, we're down to two Allure of Darkness. Uh, yes, I do play a bunch of Dark Targets, uh, 10 in total, um, but really there's only a couple of them that, you know, in certain situations that I don't mind banishing. Um, obviously, I don't want to banish a Crimson Nova if I don't have to. And with Allure, um, because, you know, as far as hand advantage goes, you're not really plussing in hand advantage because you're losing this card and losing the card you banish. Um, I just don't really want to see multiples of it in my hand, so that's why we're down to two Allure. Uh, same with two of our desires, obviously only once per turn, and you don't want to see multiples. Uh, we're down to the two Twin Twisters. Uh, again, you could play three if you want, but I have a lot of times where I open multiples. Uh, still a very good card for not only um, blowing through back row, which is the bane of this deck's existence, but also for the discard cost for getting things like Karma and Unification Engrave. And then speaking of Unification, our last main deck card is the Triple Unification. Um, good for spamming out Duzas, uh, good as a defensive play to stall. Um, just overall, pretty good card. Uh, and we are down to 40 cards in the main deck. Uh, my last build was 42 cards, but I was able to cut some ratios here and there to bring it back down to 40 to maximize the consistency of this very bricky uh, glass cannon kind of deck. Uh, so for the extra deck, uh, to support the scapegoat, we do have some links. Uh, we have the one decode talker, 
uh, the one Gaia Saber. Uh, the reason I don't just play two Deco Talker is because, you know, Deco Talker does take a lot of setup to make. Um, since you can't just use all the scapegoat tokens for it. Uh, whereas with Gaia Saber, you can just use the scapegoat tokens straight away to make it. And it's just a nice 2600 body. Uh, then we have the one Mrs. Radiant, since the scapegoat tokens are Earth. And this can actually recycle back uh, Max C and the uh, Earth um, Cubic, the um, the cubic, the level, the one level 2 that's an Earth. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, plus it's a 1900 on its own, so that's not too bad. Uh, the one Proxy Dragon for other Link 2. And then finally, the one Link Spider for our Links. Uh, for rank 10s, we have the one Super Dora, uh, Gustav Max, and then the full Spider Engine uh, with Pain Gainer, uh, Ravenous Tarantula, and Seven Sins. Uh, for rank 4s, we have Castell, Dark Rebellion, uh, Samurai, Utopia, and finally Utopia Lightning. Uh, probably either the Rebellion or the Samurai should honestly be replaced with Tornado Dragons, but I did have to um, you know, sell and trade those, uh, so I don't currently own one. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, the deck is fully focused on the OTK, as you can tell by all these aggressive, uh, you know, rank fours. Uh, so now to wrap it up with the side. Uh, starting this off, we have the free Denko Seca. Uh, definitely something you could main if you want to, but when you look at, um, you know, the current meta, um, yeah, Paleo is a very scary matchup for this deck. Uh, and yes, you do want Denko Seca for that, but I do find uh, matchups like Pendulum Magicians, uh, Two Dracos, and... Uh, you know, trick Star is better, and this card is, you know, average to lackluster against those decks, so I don't want that, you know, I don't want Deco Seca to be a dead card in the main deck, uh, plus it does conflict with your Dooza Normal Summon, which can be pretty important, so I, I feel like Denko in the side is the right choice, at least for me. Uh, now, along with the Radiant, we do uh, side the two other Kaijus, uh, the one Gamma Seal and the one Jizukiru, along with the one Slumber, uh, just to fill out the whole uh, Kaiju engine there. Uh, we also side the two Cosmic Cyclone for Pendulum Magicians, uh, True Dracos, and even uh, Trick Stars for sniping away their uh, reincarnations. And then for more board wipes, the one Dark Hole and one Regeki. Um, I believe between the side and main deck, it adds up to like uh, you know seven cards that um, you know deal with back row, and then seven cards deal with monsters. So it's a pretty nice balance ratio there. Um, you know there, there's uh, monster threats the deck can't deal with, and there's back row threats the deck can't deal with. So. You know, it's, it's good to have those options to clear those annoying cards out of the way. Uh, then for going first, we have the Triple Dimensional Barrier, of course, for uh, Pendulums. Uh, just basically buys us another turn that we could potentially use to then OTK. And then the two Chaos Trample, uh, good for Pendulums, good for Trick Stars, good, of course, for uh, you know, Masterpiece.deck. Um, so that is it for this updated deck profile on my Cubics. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.